So we're going to start lesson 6.1. It's about the properties of the three-dimensional in space. Uh, I'll start with the introduction just to remind you a little bit first about the two dimensions, and I will explain how to plot a point three-dimensional. It's not hard. It's easy. And also in the application, we will see how to also get the coordinate of a point from uh, the coordinate of three-dimensional. What does it mean two dimension? Two dimensions means I just have x and y as coordinate for for a point. So we know that this is the x axis, this is the y axis. We know that this part is a positive. Here is a negative. For y, this is a positive and this is a negative. Now, if I want to plot the point a to one, it's easy. So I just for x it's two and for y is one. I go one up and a gonna be here. Now. 3D, it means I have X, I have Y, and I have Z. And in the 3D, the X is going to be here. So this is X, Y, Z. Now, this is the positive of X. The negative of X is here in the back because this is as 3D, but Anna will not draw it because I don't want to make the figure very messy. This is the negative part for Y, and here going to be the negative part for Z. And I can see that it's like it's 3D. Now, how are we going to plot B111? First, we start by plotting as it's X and Y. So, if X is 1, so X is here 1. And Y is 1, Y here is 1. I will erase this one here, so I don't want you to feel lost with this. So I don't need it. In the class later on, I will show you how to plot it with negative. Don't worry, we're going to practice it. So, now to put the, the point B11, X and Y, I just, as I'm drawing a parallel and parallel parallelogram, and here now, when I'm standing here, it's 1, 1. X is 1, Y, 1. So I still need Z. Z, I need to go up parallel to Z. So as I'm going up like this, and I just go one unit, and it's here. Guys, it's not on the axis. It's like it's it's floating in the, in the air. It's not on the axis. And now you will see it when I will do the exercise number one in the book, that how it's going to be. So it's as B is floating here. As it's like this, like this, and G is floating here in the air, so it's one, one, one. Now let's move to some formulas. We have the midpoint formula. It's exactly the same as in 2D, but you have the Z extra. So we have if I have A B A125 and B337, what are the cards of the midpoint? X of A plus X of B over 2. Y is Y of A plus Y of B over 2. And Z is Z of A plus Z of B over 2. So what's adding here just we have this is extra uh, than the of the 2D. So just you have the Z that we added uh, on for Y and for X and Y. Now, what are the lengths of a segment also in 3D? It's exactly the same formula but what we're going to have extra is the z you need to know that the notation of the length or the magnitude it could be a b like this it could be a b with a bar here like this it could be like i'm saying it's a length it could be a b like it's an absolute value it also be it can be a vector with a, mag with a magnitude so all those notation are the same and what is the formula it's exactly the same like the 2d formula x b minus x a squared plus y b minus y a squared plus z b minus z a squared and i just replace and calculate to find the length or the uh, magnitude of any segment now we still have also this trigonometric formula the sokatoa in the right triangle i have sine cosine tangent so if this is a right triangle and if this al this angle here i need to find all the trigonometric formula for related to alpha if this is alpha the opposite side is the one that it's opposite to it this gonna be it's at the adjacent not this one and this is the hypotenuse all the time to know which one is the hypotenuse i look at the 90 degree angle i look opposite to it this one is called the hypotenuse and then using the formula sokatoa you know it from grade nine sine is opposite over hypotenuse cosine adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent opposite over adjacent and also the sine can i can use it uh, the tangent i can uh, use it sine over cosine what is cotangent it's one over tangent also it could be cosine over sine or adjacent over opposite now let's start 
Let's do an example before we start the application. For example, if I have this triangle, given the right triangle AC, I need to find sine, cosine, and tangent. So if I want to find sine first, I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And what is missing? The hypotenuse, I don't have it. So how are we going to find EC is the hypotenuse? I need to use what? Pythagoras. And you know that in any right triangle all the time, you can use Pythagoras to find missing sides. What is Pythagoras? It's side squared plus side squared equal hypotenuse squared. So AE squared, it's 4 plus 25 is equal to EC squared. So EC squared is 29. EC is radical 29. I can write also here unit or centimeter. It's linked to what is the unit of 25. And then once I have it, I can find sine opposite over hypotenuse. So it's 2 over radical 29. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, 5 over radical, 29. And tangent, I can use it opposite over adjacent, or also sine over cosine. And then I can deduce angle theta by doing or shift sine on the calculator, or shift cosine, then we can write shift sine, or it's also sine minus 1, or shift cosine, or shift tangent, and the 3 will give me the same answer. So the angle is approximately 22 degrees. Guys, it's very easy. With more application, we see that it's really easy. Let's move to number one. It's very easy. And here what I was talking about. Now you can see it better here in 3D. So this is X, Y, and Z. Uh, it's uh, application 6A, page 347 in the book. Number one, uh, first let's read the given. The cube boy, so I have a cube here. O, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's such that the length of OA, I have 3, 2, I have here uh, 4, I have 2. And we have that A lies on the X axis. See, this is X, this is the Y, and this is the Z. The first question is to write down the coordinate of A, B, E, and F. I want to find all the coordinates, I just uh, not just A, B, E, and F. So the first question I will answer for A, B, but also I want to find C, D, E, F, G. So I want you to learn how to find it all. If I want to find the coordinate of A, first I want to locate A. Where is it A? A is on the x-axis. It's on the x-axis. Directly I can, I see, I can do that Y is 0 and Z is 0. And where, how, what, what is the distance between O and A? It's 3 units, so it means A is 3, 0, 0. Let's move to B. B, where is B located? B is located here on the plane X, Y. There is no Z for B. If I do, if I go back, B it was, I have this is X and this is Y. B is here, like it's on the floor. It's not floating, it's on the floor. So Z for B is zero. X is what? If I go do the orthogonal projection, so X is what here, so the distance, this is x. How much is x? It's 3. And how much is y? It's 4. So b is 3, 4, 0. If I want to find c, where is c? c is here. c is on the y-axis. It means x is 0 and z is 0. And what? how many uh, units that is from o to c? 4. So it's 0, 4, 0. Let's go to d. d is where? D is on Z, it means X is 0 and Y is 0. And how much is uh, the distance between O and D? It's 2. Let's move on. A, B, C, D, E now. Okay, E is on which plane? E is here. It's, it just has an X and a Z. It doesn't have a Y, so Y is 0. Okay, how much the units from X? So it's 3. And Z is 2, so it's 3, 0, 2. F. Look at F. F is floating. F has X, has Y, and has also Z. How are we going to find what is X, what is Y, and what is Z? I need to go backward. So if I want to take F backward to, to be in the plane X and Y, I, what, what I need to do, I need to go down here to units. So it was B, and then we went up 2. So F was B, and then we went up 2. So Z of F is 2. It was B here, so what is the, the value of X? So it's 3. And what is the value of Y? It's 4. I still have the last one, G. G is in which plane? It's in the plane YZ, so X is 0. Y is 
four and x is uh, sorry z is two that's it now part b it's easy find the midpoint of of so how are we gonna find the midpoint of of using the midpoint formula this is very easy so it's x of o plus x of f over two i just replace y of o plus y of f over two i just also replace and z of o plus z of f over two also i i just replaced and i got for the coordinates of the midpoint of f 1.5 2 and 0 this is easy i just want to fix the handwriting and for the last question before i move to another exercise find the length of of so i need to use the distance formula length it means the distance formula this one is also called the distance formula so it's x of f minus x of o squared what are the coordinates of o i didn't ask you guys o it's the origin so it's zero 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 and then i just use the formula and i find the coordinate of the uh, uh sorry the length of the segment of f. now if i move to exercise two and three it's very easy it's very simple it's just formulas you use the midpoint formula here you use the distance formula the radical one so i will not do it you can just do it by yourself and check the answer from the answer key i will move now to number four i will start number four if it will not be done in this video it, i will finish it in the second video so now a b c d is a square based pyramid so when when i say pyramid it means we know the pyramid i have a base it could be any quadrilateral here it's a square and guys we don't throw we don't draw in 3d like this a square and then we draw the pyramid like this no we draw it as a parallelogram so i will show you how to draw it let me erase it and i'll show you how to draw it we draw it as a parallelogram but when we are doing any calculation or any proving we will consider that it's a square and it has all the properties so to draw it first why i'm drawing this is dotted because it's in the back i cannot see it i draw like a parallelogram but i know that when I am working, here it's a 90 degree, here it's 90, here it's 90, and here is 90. And also I know that the sides of the square are all 20, 20, 20, 21. If I want to calculate anything, I can use the property, the property of a square. So the base is B, C, D. So B, C, D, and E. And where is A? They said here, and A is the apex, so A is up here. It's uh, the the it's here the the vertex of the it's the head of the pyramid. So you can put it anywhere you want, guys. And John, you, jo you just you join. And that's it. I did in the other page now. And this is A. And it's better also to make this side here dotted because this is in the back I cannot see it. And this is now my pyramid. And the faces we so we call A B C is a face. It's an isosceles triangle. What's not what what I didn't like in the exact it's not very clear. They didn't really mention that if it's an equilateral or an isosceles triangle, the faces. But in general, it's isosceles. It means AB is equal to AC. So all the are uh, isosceles, the triangles here, and the base is a square. They said here the length of the side of the square is 20, and the vertical height is 15 meter. It means, guys, if I throw A here. A gonna be gonna point here on the intersection of the diagonals and A I can name it here O for example A O the measure of A O is 15 meters so guys you can see the figure here it's more clear that's it I I draw it on algebra it's much more clear B C D E is a square yes guys and from here to here it's 20 and from here to here it's 20 you cannot see it like this because it's 3D, but but in real life, yeah, it's 20, 20, 20, 20. And here I have it, this AO is 15. And M is the midpoint of BC. Also, when you do the midpoint, we do it approximately. Now, the first question is to draw a labeled sketch of the, of the pyramid. We did it, and we put M the midpoint of BC. Now, part B and part C, this is a little bit picky. Calculate the angle between the face ABC and the base BCD. Here, BCD. here there is a property. That's why and I wrote it here. And you need to know the property before you start to solve. 
To find the angle between two planes, we call B, C, D, E a plane or a face. It's the same. And we call A, B, C, it's a plane. A plane, it's a, 